going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use sliders with Kinter and Python. Alright, in the last video we looked at how to open files with the file dialog box. In this video, we're going to look at sliders. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee at just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so sliders. What am I talking about? You know what a slider is. A little slider that goes down at the bottom or on the side of a program or something, like on a web page, or like right here, you know, you slide up and down. How do we do this when Kinter and graphical user interfaces? So that's what we're gonna look at. So I've created a file called slider.py. I have just the basic starter text that we've used pretty much throughout this entire series. And uh, so let's create our first slider. It's very, very simple. We're going to use the scale widget, which is weird. Why don't they just call it the slider widget? I have no idea, but they've called it uh, scale. So you can designate vertical up and down or horizontal left and right. And the default is up and down for some reason. So we're just going to do that one first. I'm going to call it vertical. And we just create a scale widget. And we do it like we've done all the widgets we designate we want it in root. And now the only real thing you need to tell it is where to start and where to stop. So you want your slider to go from zero to 100, from 50 to 1000, from 250 to 230, whatever you want, whatever range, you have to designate that right here. And we just use a from and to but the from needs a from and an underscore. And then you set it equal to whatever. Now, if we leave off the underscore, you can see it gets all real angry and it, it realizes that's an error right away. So I have no idea why you need an underscore, but you do. And then you need to designate the two. And notice there's no underscore for the two, which doesn't make sense. I mean, let's be consistent here, people. <laughs> I don't know who built this. So let's, I don't know, let's go what? Uh, 200. I don't know. And now we just go vertical dot pack to put this guy on the screen. Now it's important that you pack it on its own line. You don't want to come up here and go dot pack like we have so often in the past. For some reason that screws things up later on and I'll show you why in just a second. Okay, so slider.py, let's save this, head over to our terminal and run it. And when we do that, we get this slider. It goes from zero to 200. It's not much to look at, but you can change the, uh, graphical properties of it, change the color, foreground, border, all the stuff. We've looked at how to do that for like labels and things. Uh, so you can do that in the same way. Okay, so that's something, I guess, right? Uh, so that's vertical up and down. That's the default. We can also go horizontal. So let's do that real quick. Uh, let's go horizontal. And that's going to be a scale. Eh, you know what? Let's just copy this whole thing. And Right here, we just add another attribute. We go orient. We're going to orient it on the screen. And we want this to be horizontal. If I could spell horizontal. There we go. And likewise, we want to dot pack this guy on the screen. So if we save this, come back over here. Run this guy again. Zoom, zoom. Woo! We get this horizontal widget. All right. Not that great. One thing I want to show you really quickly, we haven't, I think we looked at this once, I didn't really talk about it, but up here we can designate how big we want our original window to be. We just call root dot geometry. And then say if we want 400 by 400, we can do that. If we save this, come back here and run it again. You can see now the, the whole box is 400 by 400. It's a little bit bigger gives us some room. Uh, so that's, we'll just show you that real quick. Okay, so we've got these sliders, they slide, they return numbers, but what do we do with them? Well, that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to return a number based on where they're slid to. And we can get that number by calling the dot get method. And we've looked at that for labels, I believe in the past. So we would go horizontal dot get, right? And if we wanted to slap this into a label, we could go, I don't know, my underscore label equals a label. Did I spell that right? L-A-B-E-L, there we go. 
and we want it in root and we want the text to equal this. And we want to pack this on the screen. So if we save this and run it. We see this zero label right here. Now if we change this, it doesn't change automatically. So if we want to do that, we need to kind of use a function or something. So instead of the label, let's create a button. Let's call it my underscore btn. That wants to be a button in root. And the text is click me. <laughs> and the command equals what slide. And we want to pack this. So up here, let's create this slide function. Boom. And inside of here, let's just copy this. Okay, so every time we press the button, it'll update this. So let's look at that real quick, just to make sure this is working. Zoom, pull it over. Zoop. So let's move this to 103. If we click me, boom, 103. 188, boom, 188. And that's pretty much it. Now, whatever you want to do with that, that is up to you. If you want to say, I don't know, let's say we want to resize this, right? We could do that. It's kind of weird. Uh, let's pull this up because we've got this root geometry right here. We could just bring this over here to our thing here. And instead of say 400, we could just put in, uh, let's see, horizontal dot get. But this is an integer and this needs to be a string. So we need to wrap this whole thing in a string function. And that'll allow us to then concatenate that into this. Okay, so that almost works, but we need to change this. We need to tell, we need to send this into our function here. So if we save this and run it, this won't work, I don't think. Let me pull it up and see here. All right, so if we bring this over here, if we click this, oh, it doesn't work. Look at that. So it's changed to 138 horizontally. Vertically, it's still 400, right? We go 179. Yeah, that works. 200. Right? Cool. So we can change this to, let's see, 400 if we want. Save this and run it. Come back here. All right, we're at 400 by 400. If we change this to 200, boom. We can go back to 400, boom. Right? That's kind of cool. We could do the same thing for this if we wanted to, right? We haven't yet, but we could. Now, what about just moving the slider and having it update based on the slider? We could do that too. That's a little trickier, but let's take a look at that. So instead of using the button, we want to just use the slider. So we'll stick with this horizontal guy. We can send a command into that. And we can send that command equal to say slide and then okay so that should work now this will not work this is what i was thinking earlier we need to pass something from here we need to pass whatever this is into here for some reason so let's save this and run it just to make sure but i don't think this is going to work like i said earlier yeah we get boom slide is not defined oh that's not the problem i was thinking of the reason why this isn't working now is because this function is below this. So if we copy this, bring it up here. Okay, so now that error will go away, but it will get a different error, I think, this time. Let's check and see. Yeah, so we get all these errors. So whenever we're, we're sliding this, it's sending the command, but it, it it's not sending what this is, 147. And for some reason, the our slide function won't pick up with the dot get thing. So we need to be explicit when we do it for some reason, just a weird little thing I discovered. Uh, so how do we do that? We just come over to slide and let's just call this, um, uh, boy, I don't know, var, var, variable, I don't know. Save this, I think that's all we really need to do. Well, maybe not, we'll run it and see, boom. 
Yeah. See, look what happens. When we're at zero, it's very touchy, right? So if we go 300, it's okay. So as soon as we move it to something, it starts to resize and that resizing makes everything a little wonky. So this is not the best way to do things, right? Unless you wanted to click it and then use your arrow. Oh, you can't even use your arrow. So yeah, this is not a great way to do it. I'd much rather use a button. But if you wanted to do that that way, for some reason, you could by passing in var or value or any just any variable at all, then this whole thing, the slider output, I guess you would call it gets passed into slide function. And that works. So I, I don't really like doing that. But you could now we could let's see, change our button to use both of the sliders. So we could go here, instead of 400, we could concatenate again, call the string function. And inside of here pass, what do we call it vertical dot get. Okay, I think that should work. Oh, we got to close our program. Close. Clear. Oops. And there we go. Oh, line 18 horizontal dot pack. What has gone wrong? Line 18 horizontal dot pack. Vertical dot pack. Hmm. Oh, we're missing a somehow that got deleted. All right, so this should work now. I'm just playing at this point. This is a, a hot mess, this video, but you know, so let's move this to 118 and 147. Boom. Now the whole thing gets <laughs> resized. We could go back to 400 by 118. We could change this to 200. And that works. Right? <laughs> Need to change this to 400, I think, so that we could go back. But yeah, so that's how you do that. So sliders, pretty simple, all things to the contrary. Uh, you know, you can use these for all kinds of different things. They're kind of fun to play with. And like I said, you can change the display of this, make them bigger, make them a different color, uh, change the length of them and all that stuff in the same way we've done with labels and stuff in the past. Pretty simple. So that's all for this video. If you like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF versions of all my best selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com. We'll see you in the next video.